What's going on, chess lover? This is Maurice Bishop Chess. So y'all know my slogan, life is a game of chess. If y'all looking at my content for the first time and you're the one that want to get better in chess, whether it's opening, middle game, or end game, or maybe you're on my channel because you want to be entertained with the live bullet and blitz games that I play online, or maybe you want to find out not only how to be successful on the chessboard, but also successful in life. If this is you, make sure you hit that notification bell on, and also don't forget to hit the subscribe button and guys if you have any questions and any content that you want me to share make sure you drop that comment below and i will give you the content that you requested without further ado let's actually get right to this video all right guys peace What's going on, chess lover? This is Maurice Bishop Chess. See, I know my slogan. Life is a game of chess. All right, guys. Today, I'm going to actually show y'all, you know, the black lion opening with the white pieces. I guess in this case, you might as well call this the white lion since we are playing with the white pieces. So um, without, without further ado, let's actually get started. All right, guys. So I play D3. And... When you play D3, most people's going to be like, you're a beginner, you're an amateur. They're not knowing what you're going to do. So they're just thinking that you're just going to be playing random moves, right? So knight f6, knight b to d2, e6, e4, d6, c3, um, bishop e7, h3, um, black castles kingside. So, and knight f3. So as, as y'all notice, like guys, uh, with the black pieces, we're pretty much doing the exact same um, formation as we would if we was actually black. So he goes on uh, e5, I go queen c2, you know, maintaining that pawn on e4 and everything. Um, bishop b6, I go bishop b2, just developing. He goes knight b to d7, I go g4. Uh, c5 is played, I go knight f to g3, b5, and... Let me actually um go back, guys. Um, I I want to go back to um uh, where I was at with the knight f one instead of knight f one. Uh, I kind of recommend going knight g five only due to the fact that this light square bishop is trapped, and um we have a light square bishop, so we could potentially um create light square weaknesses. So I do highly recommend if. If your opponent do trap his um, bishop like that, automatically go uh, knight g5 and uh, win it. So stuff like somebody may play knight e8, uh, knight captures e6, f captures e6, and um, queen b3 because we're hitting um, the queen captures e6 and we're also hitting uh, b7. Um, if for some reason they go uh, knight c7, uh, especially if you're playing like blitz or whatever, you know, there's no crime in uh, taking this um, pawn on b7. You know, the engine recommends knight f3, um, b5, and then, um, you know, oh, I'm sorry, guys, um, b5. Uh, it's kind of crazy, though, because then e e even uh, in the engine, they say castle king side, but that's not the way we want to go. Uh, I I really don't like castle and king side because I want to do a king side attack because that's what the black lion does. So this is not something that I will want to do. So that's why um instead of going knight at three, I highly recommend going um queen catchers on b seven, only due to the fact that you know even if he goes on rook b eight, uh and I'm pretty sure you could just take off yeah you could just take this off queen cat he he's not gonna be able to trap your queen. Or he's not gonna be able to trap your queen, even with rook b, uh, rook a eight, queen b seven. Um, he, this queen can't leave this square because we'll take this uh knight here. So, uh, white white will be good, and then we'll have a um a pass pawn on a uh, a two square where we could potentially start pushing uh, when time comes. So this is what I recommend. Um, that's personally me. I actually played a game like this, and like I said, I, I won. It, it was <laughs> it was brutal. Um, all right, guys. So let's go back. So knight f one. Um, my opponent goes b five. Another thing about that, guys. Um, also I recommend instead of I didn't do it this game. Um, cause I was rushing, but um, 
I always like pushing a4 to prevent b5 you know so to save you to save yourself the trouble and a whole bunch of tactical stuff that black can do on a queen side it's a lot safer just to go a4 first you know I just highly recommend that but knight f1 b5 knight g3 um, b4 and this is why I highly recommend just going a4 first because like I said, you can still win games, um, even if they do push the B pawn. But I just highly recommend going A4 first before you do anything. Um, Rook G1, I play, he takes, he takes. Um, in which, with Black, see, if Black don't understand, like, how to um, play against the White Lion or whatever. He, he's going to do stuff like that, just take the pawn because he, he just lost or whatever. And the whole point of taking back with the pawn, because if... If the knight wanted to go to knight b8 and then knight c6, um, we would prevent him from going to d4. So this pawn would be um pretty great actually. Um, queen a5, I just go bishop d2, just developing and everything. He goes back to queen c7, and then um I go knight f5. This is where I go. Um, there was a move that Black can, could could have done. Um. He could have played. He could have played something like c4, uh, which the end say is the best move, and, and which I believe that too because the fact that uh, I, I feel as though white has too much play. So something like d4, um, you know, if he decides to go d5, then we could just take that pawn off. Knight captures d5, d captures e5, and then if he goes queen c7, um, just hitting this um, e pawn. We could just move the king to f1. If knight captures e5, knight captures, queen captures e5, and then bishop f3. And I think white is actually um pretty good. Um, he's actually great in this position. Even after rook d8, we got rook e1. Uh, eventually we're gonna go knight f5. Uh, if the bishop takes, obviously we're gonna take with the g point, open his g file. So I think overall, um, white is not bad at all. White is actually great. Especially since this knight is uh, a lot flexible because we got knight e4, we got knight h5, we got knight f5. You know, this is just a great... I I, I feel comfortable um, in this position. Alright, so... I go... So after the queen c7, I go knight f5. Uh, my opponent takes, as he should, and then g captures f5. Um, King h8, you know, he wanted to get away from the um, the rook pen, you know, on his g file, get away from that. And I go rook d1. Uh, d5 is played. Now, look at this, guys. So, again, I know a lot of people, they want to do moves like the engine and everything and things like that. Um, personally, guys, uh, I do not recommend this. And uh, until I could figure out what the whole uh, engine, like the whole point of it, I mean, I, I kind of figured a point, but I won't play if I don't really deeply understand it. I understand it, but I don't deeply understand it. So the engine wanted uh, to do moves like C4. And the reason why, remember I told y'all in the beginning, I want to keep my pawn on C3 because I don't want no knight coming on a D4 square. Well, in this position, uh, in this position, the engine wanted me to go C4. The thing about this, I don't like the knight b8. Uh, I don't, I don't like when knight b8 comes here because then he got knight c6 and knight d4. Um, I, I, I don't like this at all. Um, even if I go king f1, knight c, um, knight c6, queen c1, rook a b1, and then the end is saying going rook a b1. I feel as though you're giving black too much play, um, with this. I, I don't like this at all. You know, I, I just, y'all can analyze this yourself, um, deeply um, analyze it. I'm still doing that, but I, I don't like giving up this D4 square. Because I honestly, guys, I think every time I gave up a D4 square or whatever, I automatically, like, start losing like crazy. And, and maybe because I don't understand certain positions, but I do not like C4 at all. And then on top of that, I have a backward point, whereas in the future, uh, that can actually hurt me in the end game as well. So this C4, I, yeah, if you're going to play this, you got to play some really accurate moves. Like you got to really know what you're doing if you're going to play this. Uh, for me, I'm not comfortable with playing C4, so I don't recommend going C4. That's just um, me, y'all. All right, so Rook D1, uh, he goes D5. 
And I, and honestly, and that was the whole point of on um, them saying go C four to prevent him from going D five. But you'll you'll see what I mean. After D five, I just go bishop D five. Like I I don't care. Like I I, I feel as though I'm fine. Bishop G five D captures. He takes no problem. Um, like I said, this still beats the fact that he can't just go knight B eight and knight C six because he can't get to this D four square or this B four square. I, I I feel pretty good about this. Uh, he goes queen c6. Um, I go bishop catchers on f6. Uh, there, there, there is something in this, guys. Uh, this is a, a little trick, which is what I saw. Um, I didn't play it because um, I think I was... Um, in this time, I think my time was getting pretty low, so I had to uh, move pretty fast. Um, but uh, I did see this move, bishop c4. And I didn't want to play hope chess or whatever because, I mean, this is a good move in general because this will prevent the pawn from going on C4 and then maybe bringing the rook to the D file and then coming to D3. So, you know, so Bishop C4 is actually not a hope chess. It's actually a really good move. But what I'm saying is even if I go Bishop C4 and he decides to go Queen Catchers E4, I'm good with that because after queen catches e4, knight catches e4, and I win his bishop on e7. So this is um, so to always look for that, guys, the uh, undefended piece. I'm telling y'all, this is where a lot of opponents is going to miss. They're going to miss moves like this. Um, they're gonna they're gonna miss um pieces that's like undefended, and they're just gonna drop it. So so that's a something uh, a little tip for y'all. But I did bishop captures f6. Uh, he takes, and then I go knight g5. Uh, he goes c4, and of course, guys, c4 is a very good move because the fact that um, eventually, if this light square bishop gets got, you know, gets taken by any chance, or maybe they want to go rook d8 and maybe sacrifice their rook to get a pass point, you know, this c4 point is actually um, really helpful and it's really great. Um, so keep that in mind. Uh, so I'll just go f3. I strengthen this point on e4. Uh, not a problem. But again, guys, I had another uh, attack going. Uh, one of my, matter of fact, I'm going to let y'all decide. Can y'all see the attack or a little tactical uh, sensation over here? Can y'all can y'all spot it? Give y'all three seconds to uh, find it. Three seconds. All right, guys. So if y'all saw this move, uh, Bishop Catcher C4, you are correct. Um, because if queen catches c4, rook catches d7, uh, which is also um, pretty great um, for white. You know, I, I like it. You know, so this is something that y'all can um, do. So always remember that uh, undefended pieces, you know, it comes in handy. All right, so my opponent goes on um, rook a d8. Uh, obviously, um, he saw that little tactical thing, so he wanted to prevent that. So not a problem. I go h4. Um, what my bad? H4. Uh, my opponent goes h6. Uh, guess what I what I what I did, guys? I go king f2. <laughs> I go king f2. Now why 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 did I do that? Because guys, uh, if he takes this, this this is good for me. H catcher g5. If you get a position like this, guys, you are golden. The reason why is uh if this should be seven, I have rook g4, you know, and then if uh g6, you know, trying to get himself some breathing room, then you have rook h4. Now, the king gotta move to a right square. If he decides to go king g8, then this like automatically loses right here, guys. This like I think this is automatically uh loses. Uh math oh my bad guys. Um I don't know why this thing just uh did that right here. All right, here we go. Um, rook g four h four. So let let let's look at something. So if king g eight, let's see what the engine say. What would the engine say about this? All right, so the engines don't even recommend um rook h one. He recommends queen c one, and I see why only due to the fact that. Uh, if this bishop takes, we could take back with the queen. So it's actually a lot more effective. Because if we go rook h1, the bishop can automatically just take. And then he'll have some queen space, um, a king space, um, king g7, and then king f6. Because the bishop already took here. 
So that's why the queen has to protect this um, g5 pawn. So even if um, king goes to g7, um, we do have um, rook h1 and if um, rook h8, then we have um, the f6. So if he takes, we'll take, he'll take, we can go um, rook a6. Remind you, the rook can take because the queen captures a6 check. And if king g8, we got um, queen a7 check. And then the check right here, king g8. And then, um, like I said, it, it'll still be a work in progress or whatever, but it'll still put a lot of pressure on a black king. So, um, and plus also I got a piece back too. You know, so I got a piece back, and also uh, I got a powerful H file, and then eventually, you know, I could do some stuff to the Black King. All right, so so let's see, guys. So I go Bishop Catcher C4. Uh, he doesn't take my knight yet, so he takes. I go Queen Catcher D5. My opponent saw some tactical abilities. Oh my bad. So I already just <laughs> I was gonna let y'all guess that, but since my error already showed that. But he has some tactical ability. He goes knight catcher z4. Um, I go, um, hold on, guys. Okay, this is what he did first. Queen catches d1. That's what I did. He goes ace catcher g5 first. And then I go ace catcher g5. And then he goes knight catcher z4. And then after f catcher z4, he goes queen catcher z4. But uh, even though he did a tactical ability or whatever, but this... This is this is the principle I want y'all to get to uh, to remember. If you're gonna do a tactical ability or you're gonna do some type of tactics on your opponent, you need to also think, you know, if I do this, will my king be safe? If you can do some type of tactical exchange or some type of um, tactics on your opponent and your king is not safe, then you probably need to reevaluate that and just to make sure if nobody can get to your king. You know, especially when it comes to me. My opponent did some tactics on me and everything, and it pretty much cost him the game. Can everybody see the move? I'm pretty sure y'all can. The move is queen h5 check. After king g8, I go rook h1. Why is this so great? Because there is nothing that he can do to stop this mate on h8. Not at all. There is nothing he can do. Even if he decides to go g6, then... Uh, if he goes g6, then I'm going to just go queen a7 checkmate. There is nothing he can do. And for all y'all to think he can uh, check me, uh, there's nothing he can do. Queen captures h2 check. Uh, after king g3, there's no more checks after that. And it's nothing he can do. I mean, yes, there is a check. But the only thing he could do is just sacrifice his queen. And then I'll just take it, you know. And what my opponent did is he did queen c5 check. And even with the queen c5 check, it's still nothing he can do because I still have King G2 and there's no way he can get any more checks in. Uh, of course, after the Queen C5 check and everything, uh, his time already ran out anyway, but it didn't even matter because I was getting ready to mate him anyway. So that's pretty much what happened. All right, guys, I hope y'all enjoyed this video. Uh, definitely uh, like, share, comment. Let me know what y'all think of this game. And also, guys, um, if you're looking at this content for the first time, you know, definitely uh, turn on your notification bell on. And also, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. All right, guys. Peace.